I hope you guys can see me now. I, I really want to apologize. Uh, just going to wait until somebody actually says they can see me. Richard Mark says just electromantic. Can you guys see me now? Okay, thanks. Okay, um, funny story. I have been talking to myself for eight minutes. <laughs> so I now get to repeat everything I just said, and I hope I can remember what I just said. Uh, but I just wanted to thank everybody. Uh, happy Friday. <laughs> it, it wouldn't be a live stream with me without something, you know. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for joining me. Um, I really wanted to do this tonight, uh, even though, <clears throat> to be perfectly honest with you, I am physically and mentally exhausted, but it's in a good way. It, it's been for a amazing, um, amazing, uh, day and one that you know I was highly anticipating I was like a little kid at Christmas last night I kept waking up and um, <clears throat> because two things well one thing was supposed to happen today and that was and I'll, I'll just go through this again is the um, the reprinting of Rack Toys. Rack Toys is um, back in publication and I just want to answer a question from Magnus and Kaboom uh, Rack Toys is an ongoing video segment. Of course it is. It's part of Toy Ventures. I just, I talk about, uh, is this re echoing? Hmm. Okay. Let me see if I can, uh, I got all my sound off. That's really strange. Um, huh. I have my speakers off here, so I'm confused. How's that? You can still hear the echo? Huh. Let me hear it. Have my okay, I know what to do. I know what to do. Um, <laughs> thanks for uh, pointing that out, by the way, Richard. I, I'd like to get on top of this. Hmm. Oh, I see the problem. Huh. How do I fix that? How's that? Is that a little better? Can you hear me now? No echo here. Oh, that's good. Uh, I apologize. I think what's happening is I don't have the mic set up in the right spot. Um, and I don't seem to be able to correct that. So I hope you guys can hear and understand me. Um, I will try to fix this on the next one. I, I thought I had it licked this time, uh, but there seems to be uh, a little bit of a sound issue. And I do apologize for that. Um, oh my God, I'm number one on an Amazon new release for the category. That's that's overwhelming. Thank you for telling me that. I didn't know that. Um, Richard, I, I can't do anything about the repeating. Um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, oh boy. Uh, microphone. Yeah, I, I want to... I'll just take the microphone down a bit, and I hope that works. I'm trying with the echo. Biographies and historic graphic novels. That's great. Okay, thank you, guys. Uh, I apologize if there's an echo for some of you. It appears that most people are um, are hearing it okay. That's great. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, I'm, I can't tell you how overwhelmed I am. I didn't realize that... I would be the first book out of the door for Nacelle Publishing. I had no, um, I had no idea, and um, you know, Rack Toys was a really personal book for me, and 
you know, especially considering like I dedicated the first edition to my grandmother, this one as well. Uh, and she, um, she's since passed away. Uh, you know, she got to see the first book. And in fact, my only surviving copy of the first print run for me is, um, uh, is, is, uh, here now. And, um, it, it's, um, I'm trying with the sound, fellas. Uh, let me know if that's any better. Um, oh, that's not a sleeping bag. That's a flag my daughter made of the, um, oh, my goodness, just got super quiet. <sighs> How's that? Sound is low. Oh, super. <laughs> I wish I could. Um, I wish I could change the microphone. Uh, okay, better sounds better. Good. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, this is I'm I'm a bit of a newbie, and um, I still want to have Jason on in the next uh, couple of weeks to do a pod stallions on here. So, um, uh, I, you know, I I don't know how I can make people um, <laughs> I don't know how to make people happy with this. I guess I was a stuff to yell. Um, so that was the first uh, thing. I had going on with um, with Nacell was um, Rack Toys. I knew this was coming out today. They've been doing uh, a great deal of promotion with me and putting me on different uh, podcasts. I'm going to be on Sirius XM Radio. I I'm really grateful for the amazing amount of work they did with me to promote this. And it's really, um, well, it's really gratifying. It's it's one of those things that, you know, I worked really hard on that book a few years ago, like 10 years ago. And to have this company, this television company, say, we want to launch our product line, our new publishing division with your book. Well, how do you how do you not feel uh, honored and grateful and a bit humbled by that whole thing? And now to find out it's number one on Amazon. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited. I'll show you some of the new content in the book. Now, if you have the first edition, don't feel that you would have to race out and, and buy this edition. What this is for is um, someone who couldn't find the original edition. But this is, you know, they're calling it the ultimate edition. This is a lovely piece by Brian Volk Weiss that he wrote for the book and I laid out. Um, and I was happy to do that. I thought that was a lot of fun. Uh, I've added a few new pages of knockoff figures, the crazy creeps. Sorry, I'm backwards here. And this is a, a wonderful dollar store Hercules figure that I have. Um, and then just kind of um, uh, adding, you know, stuff I got in the last 10 years, like Sonic Woman. And... Um, Yes, I am the disco stretch monster. Uh, <laughs> I've got the shirt, uh, but no, I, I I use the stretch monster as an avatar. There's some more knockoffs here, and um, there's there's stuff peppered throughout the book that has been changed. I had to change a bunch of photos for uh, technical reasons, uh, but for most part, it's 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 a very similar book. So don't feel that you have to buy the second edition if you already supported the first edition. But you know, if you know somebody who's interested in the book and it, it sold out a long time ago, this is the time to grab it. Uh, I do not think it will be going out of print for a very long time. And I'm very excited to have this kind of like evergreen uh, publication. Here's another you know, new addition to the book and that is the, the Mighty Crusaders, uh, the web parachutist. It's, um, again, it, it's, it's been an overwhelmingly uh, positive day and one where I don't even think uh, I quite understand what's going on. Like, you know, I was looking at their Instagram and Brian Volk Weiss and he's standing in a bookstore holding my book and it was like, is this real? Is this happening? Because it, it's super awesome and uh, just tremendously, as I said, validating and I'm, I'm super excited. And to top that off, it was like a double whammy today because I didn't really get a lot of time to bask in that. 
Uh, I don't have to do anything with Rack Toys. It's being sold through another company. Uh, so I'm not picking orders or anything, but I got a text last night from my printer saying somebody will be at your house first thing in the morning. He's an early riser with your magazines. And I got excited because I figured, you know, 10, this guy would show up. Well, this guy showed up at seven. Uh, he was a real early riser. Um, and ta-da, issue five is here. And as always, it's it's a bit nerve-wracking when it gets in because you're sitting there going like, what's wrong with it? What, is there any problems? You know, and no, it, it's awesome. Uh, you know, it gets easier and easier to um, do this. Uh, Corey and I have really worked out a great system. We've got some tremendous help with this issue. And I'm going to just kind of walk through it because the last time I did a live stream, I kind of did a little bit of a walkthrough. But um, I, I do two thirds of it, and then Corey does the other third, and he doesn't need my help on anything. He just hands me the finished pieces, and so I honestly don't get to see the full magazine until the couple days before printing. And um, oh, I would love to be at Target and Walmart someday, and so uh, or even Barnes and Noble. I'd love to be at Barnes and Noble. Thank you very much, Matt. That means a lot to me. Um, so what is the joy of when Corey delivers his half or his third or quarter, whatever, of the magazine? I think it's a third this time around. It's a big time. I haven't read the article. Uh, I haven't seen the article. And it's often on things that I don't know anything about. And that's to me, is the most... Uh, exciting thing. I, I make this magazine because I wish that this magazine existed. And uh, but it's kind of a, you know, a weird thing because like I pick it up and I've read everything because I wrote some of it. And I, if I didn't read it, I edited some of it and I've been staring at it for months. So it sort of loses all meaning. So the joy is when I read an article like this one. And this is the opening piece. And I'm so glad we chose this. This is called the, the Emma Peel Mysteries. And for, not, for those of you not in the know, Emma Peel is a character on a show called The Avengers, not filled as Avengers. And it was a 1960s spy show, and I, I highly recommend you check it out. It is uh, wonderful and surreal and um, just absolutely tremendous. And, and Corey has done a job cataloging this very rare fashion doll of Emma Peel. And he admitted to me, and I love this so much, he admitted to me that because we've got such a, uh, a following in Japan, uh, Toy Ventures sells very well in Japan, he wrote this with Japan in mind. Uh, they have a culture there uh, called otaku, which is, um, you know, needing to know everything about something. And it really shows in this piece. This piece is very detailed and very interesting, and I learned a lot from it. I didn't know... Um, I didn't know this, and that, that's a beautiful thing. Um, the next piece is uh, written by my friend David Lockwood, who runs the Vintage Toys and Action Figures group on Facebook. I'm sure you guys know him, David Toy Nerd Lockwood. He also owns a, a killer comic book store in uh, Boston. But he did a piece on, uh, sorry, I'm backwards again, Electro Man and Zog. This is Ideal's Electro Man and Zog. Yeah, it's great to be big in Japan. It's so validating. I spent so much money on Japan. Um, and we really had a lot of fun laying this out. It just uh, wrote itself. Is it that a year since she died? I didn't know that, Rich. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was a huge fan of hers, especially even on Game of Thrones. She was amazing. Theater of Blood. She's just fantastic. Um, Kamikaze is awesome. You're right. And yeah, uh, this this was every issue. There's a uh, breakthrough. And, you know, like there's a there's an article I can start right away uh, because it's laying out a magazine is like a problem. It's like a puzzle. And Dave's article it came to mind immediately. All the pieces, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm always really fond of those pieces. There's, 
there's some that make me struggle and make me crazy. And then there's just this piece I knew, you know, just in five minutes, I was like, I'm going to lay it out like this and like this and bang. And uh, honestly, it's the one I never really went back to, uh, you know, Corey did some polishes on it and, you know, changed a couple things that I agreed with, but it looks exactly the same as it did when I started. And uh, it's a really fun article. I've never owned an Electro Man. I've never, um, I've probably held them at some point, but I don't remember them as kids. And it was uh, one of my favorite pieces to lay out in the five years of doing this, just because it just fell together, you know? Um, it felt really good as a designer and um, James Bond's wife. That's correct. All the time in the world. So then the, the, the middle piece, every single month, well, I don't come up every single month. It's every three months. I think uh, every single month would be really hard right now. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a chief cook and bottle washer. I've got my wife upstairs uh, packing all the orders right now. So yeah, every month would be, oof. Um, your family used to work for Ideal Toys. Yeah, um, but you had one. Yeah, it's um, it was apparently a giant hit. It was, uh, you know, kind of like a post-Bionic Man toy like Pulsar. and makes a lot of sense why it would be popular. It's pretty neat. So the cover story, um, the cover, I've heard a lot about Busted Electromans. The cover story, of course, is Planet of the Apes, and this begins our journey of the Planet of the Apes. And I was very lucky to have uh, Marty Abrams for a day, and we went over the first um, the first article is all about the genesis of the line. It isn't about the line itself, so to speak, but it is his experiences with it. There's some very I have a little Marty Abrams peel and stick sticker in there it's not actually real but just you know sometimes you just want to go with something you know it just makes you laugh um but what there is a lot of is very rare photographs uh incredible anecdotes this is a really i look less like lauren green <laughs> okay thanks i hope i don't know uh do i sound like lauren green that'd be awesome uh, we've got some, you know, behind the scenes stuff at Mego, and um, it really is one of my favorite pieces. And of course, this isn't it. This is going to keep going. I just can't tell it in one issue. Um, I really want to do a thorough job of Planet of the Apes. So Planet of the Apes will be showing up in the next few issues, just so I can kind of put it all together. It won't be the cover story every time. We'll we'll keep going. But I want to, I want to do Planet of the Apes justice. Uh, it's one of the reasons I collect toys, and uh, that is actually the Mego uh, Toy Fair booth in 1974. And uh, no thin plastic on Electro Man. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, and of course, I have shots of the original uh, handmade prototypes from Mego in '74. These were the ones that appeared on uh in famous monsters magazine if you guys are fans and like stacy keach okay or well there's a lot of guys playing my camera maybe it isn't stacy keach uh it's really been uh one of my favorite things i've written uh mainly because you know marty gave so much and i was actually able to you know tie this piece into what Migo is doing with apes now, and um, I am a tremendous uh, fanboy for what Migo is doing with apes now. I, I really like it, and I can't wait to see more. Um, <laughs> it's like a peach. The um, next piece, <laughs> I never saw myself looking like a keech. Uh, that's interesting. Um, the Ballad of Baby Frank. I want to talk about this because this may be my favorite read of the um, of the magazine. And that's mainly because I didn't write it. Uh, you know, like a, this is actually uh, something that I can just read. And I honestly will tell you that if I saw this magazine in a store, I would buy it just for this article alone. And that's I know that sounds strange, but I, I would have to go home with this. And that 
that's a high compliment to Corey. But what it's about is this really interesting thing he became fascinated with when he was doing his Munsters piece. And that is this um, odd little scrappy do like character that Universal Studios promoted for about 10 years as like um, a kid friendly Frankenstein. And uh, it's really weird. And, and the thing's kind of hideous. And, um, you know, there's also, an, is this, is he made of dead kids? What, what is he? I love that, uh, that joke by Corey, but um, there's also something really, I find interesting for him, Keats, all right. Uh, there was a different bride in the 70s. I guess they were worried about Elsa Lanchester uh, because it's her face. So when they did the bride at Universal Studios, they would use this different Bride of Frankenstein. They called her the new Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, th that's something I didn't know. And there, actually, this this whole article, uh, Corey managed to track down not only um, people who collect this baby Frankenstein stuff, which, again, was completely unbeknownst to me, uh, but it also, he managed to find basically one of his, I guess you would, for lack of a better word, one of his creators and got some rare behind the scene photos. And it really is like, it's a magical article. I, I absolutely love this article. And um, yeah, I, I'm really happy it's in here. And it, it so fits with what I wanted to do with Toy Ventures, which is give a voice to stuff that nobody talks about enough. Yeah, I love Tom Art's Mego story. Um, but even then, I wanted to go into more detail than they did. They tried to tell such a big story, and it's a good one. I like that magazine very much, but um, I want to go a different direction with it. And um, kind of, uh, I like the play sets where they reissue play sets. I'm not sure which play sets you're talking about, Robert, but uh, I'll, I'll answer you when I can. Um, they were, there were baby DC characters. We're going to get into that. In fact, one of the reasons that Chris Franklin didn't write his Super Juniors article for this one is I thought it would uh, conflict with the baby Frank. I thought that's too much uh, babies for this. Um, yeah, Frankenstein's second wife, exactly. It doesn't, I guess, you know, there, there, there's a divorce there at some time. Uh, the other article that I'm super excited about in this, oh, the Apes play sets. Uh, the first Apes play set with the treehouse, and it was recycled. It was an Action Jackson treehouse or jungle house. Uh, the the village is the Bat Cave Redux, but then there's two other play sets: the Fortress and the Forbidden Zone Trap, and those are original and never got used again by Amigo. Uh, I don't know what they'd use the Forbidden Zone Trap for after, but yeah, no, the, the, the super, yeah, I remember the Super Babies ads, and, and Chris Franklin collects those, and he's got a great story about them, but I couldn't, I didn't want to jam this with with baby stuff. <laughs> baby Frank was enough, and, and we just, we just, we'll just put him in, a, put that in a later issue. Uh, the other uh, story we've got is called i'm not just like or i'm not like other guys and this is about a toy line maybe a lot of you are familiar with or aren't familiar with um thank you i love i love the forbidden zone trap that's my favorite set this is a line called thriller graveyard gang and this is a, a believe it or not this company which was called Powco, and tyler ham who wrote this who also sculpts for Migo, he he did a lot of research on who Palco was, and they were this cheeky company that um, that that um, possibly Vic Machizo will show up. Yes, he's hard to get a hold of these days. <laughs> um, they actually trademarked the word "thriller" for toys after the Michael Jackson video came out, and uh, you know, I guess they were worried about getting sued because they were actually a different company and they started this Palco company. And um, I guess, you know, Palco, I don't think released any other toys, but these, these thriller toys. And of course there's 
a uh, couple of zombies in there. There is a very obvious Michael Jackson knockoff. I mean, they, they did not pay Michael Jackson for this. And there's a werewolf, of course, because there's a werewolf and thriller. But these are kind of like one of those things that flew under the radar, showed up. I believe he said Child World uh, had them. I'm not sure, uh, but I don't think they really were a big hit. And I think they hit the clearance bins pretty quick. And I think I first heard about them through uh, Ray Castile. He had the Gallery of Monster Toys website. Now they're worth, you know, uh, because they're 80s and they're knockoffs, they've, they've, they've blossomed, so to speak. Because I, after, I, after I, you know, laid out this article, and I had a lot of fun with this because I had to flex my 80s muscle. I had to make this look like it was an 80s uh you know, Michael Jackson trading card is, is my inspiration for this. And um, I started to kind of, like I always do, I started to kind of surf eBay looking for these guys. And I can't afford these guys. These guys are, you know, um, like 300 bucks on the card now. And it's like, oh, I bet you 10 years ago they were 30. I have no idea. But it's just one of those things that these some of this 80s stuff has like exploded in the last four or five years and you can't even get a hold of it. As soon as you make 10 people aware of it, um, the price goes up. And well, I probably didn't help matters by publishing a, a, a six page article about it, but such is life. And um, the final article this month or th this issue is called uh, Toydom Come. And this is a wonderful piece interviewing um, comics legend Alex Ross. And uh, Jason Lindsay, my podcast partner, is the uh, fellow who hooked me up with that and uh, helped me out with the piece and actually is the author of the piece. And he did a fantastic job. You know, him and Alex know each other very well. And, um, you know, Alex is one of us. He's a real toy guy. He's a real vintage soul at heart. Uh, he loves, uh, he actually, his love for Pulsar is, is very interesting. He thinks Pulsar is one of the best sculpted action figures of all time and uh he also reveals uh, how many times he used migos as models and where he did in a lot of his comics and i think you guys will really get a kick out of that and that's why uh the 12 inch migo superman is the opening piece because he admitted that he used that a lot in kingdom come and uh i just absolutely adore that fact that's the kind of trivia I was looking for for this this magazine. Alex is a big fan of the magazine. Yeah, he loves it. Uh, in fact, uh, he really wanted to be involved, which was, um, you know, it's what a huge compliment to have Alex Ross say he likes your design, he likes your eye. Uh, I mean, I'm a tremendous uh, fan. There's there's a well, you can't see it, but there's a, it's an Alex Ross plate right here, the Justice League plate. That's how big a fan I am. I, I've got his work everywhere. Um, my wife is a huge fan of Alex Ross, so it's really cool. We, we've met a couple times. Uh, he's a very nice guy. And yeah, he, he is he is actually a fan of, of the magazine. And uh, Alex needs, he does need to do some Pulsar art. You're absolutely right. And I would, I would like that very much. Um, so the other thing that's coming in the magazine and if you guys have pre-ordered it you'll be getting one of these and i still have some left but uh i'm just tickled with this thing because uh is the the mr rock uh, flyer i tried uh very hard to um make a promotional video of this thing flying and you know how hard it is to shoot a children's glider flying it, it's really ridiculous um and it just kept ending in the pool and ending in trees and i thought about making a, a blooper video of you know with tuba music just showing all the failed attempts to try and make this thing fly uh, but uh, hey I'm, I'm glad you're here too erotimus flash and uh i just thought i'd Put one together here and give you guys an idea of the lunacy of this. Um, I was lucky enough to find a factory that still makes these things. They do custom work. Um, and 
this is, I got my friend Chris Franklin, who's also uh, written for Toy Ventures, to do this fantastic illustration of Mr. Rock. Um, this is just the goofiest um, idea I could come up with <laughs> for a toy. I'm, I'm trying to top this. I don't know if I can, but this thing is a working uh, glider. I, I can't show you how, but... It just smashed into the wall. Uh, <laughs> and my dog has run away with a couple of these, but I don't know if you'll want to take it out, but it comes in a really great package. I was uh, quite pleased to put the Lincoln International logo on it. Uh, of course, that's just a parody. We, I'm not Lincoln International. Um, I am Odeon. And uh, hey, uh, good. glad you joined us. Thank you very much. So that uh, is, you know, a terrifically exciting piece to do that. Maybe you could, <sighs> that is, that's a good idea, Brent. Um, I don't know how I'd go about that, but I would love for Alex to draw a pulsar for the bag. That would go on the cover, obviously. Um, I'll plant a bug. I'll plant a bug. Thank you for that idea. Great. I look forward to seeing your Mr. Rock drawing. Tag me in it. So um, with that, I thought uh, I've had a lot of stuff piling up here that I haven't been able to open because of, um, well, I really, you know, I really want to get the magazines out and all the, you know, the promotion I've been doing and, and the live streams and that sort of stuff. So um, I thought I'd open up a few things because I think you folks will um, appreciate this stuff. This is the kind of stuff I do all the time. And, um, well, I, you know what? I I thought you would appreciate the vintage stuff I've gotten in the mail in the last couple of days. I know it's weird to watch somebody open their mail, but I do it. I do it all the time. I, like, I always watch these videos. So This is something I picked up recently and kind of forgot I bought. Uh, you know, because it was a good deal, and uh, I just, you know, you hit buy it now, and then you forget that you did it because it was like, you know, 25 bucks. This is the Ben Cooper Spider Woman costume. Uh, I've always wanted this. I am a tremendous fan of Spider Woman as a kid. Uh, I guess I had a crush on her when I was, um, I don't know if I'll put this on. Um... <clears throat> I guess I had a crush on her as a kid, but I couldn't understand it. I would always buy her. Um, I'm looking to interview some people who work for Heroes World Stores. I have not had a chance to run into them. I almost got in touch with Ivan Snyder, but apparently he's kind of kind of difficult to talk to sometimes. I hope to someday talk to Ivan Snyder. Um, pull it in three parts to get the picture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that'd be awesome. So there's the suit. Uh, it's obviously for a child and a girl so i won't be putting that on but um yeah i love spider woman merchandise and it's usually kind of um overpriced and i don't own a lot of it and i had a crush on goldie gold yeah i love goldie gold and action jack i actually have the vhs of that uh that, that's a great cartoon i think jack kirby um is is uh, responsible somehow for Goldie Golden Action Jack. I think he worked at Ruby Spears at the time. Yeah, I, I don't have any advertising in Toy Ventures. I've been approached. Um, it's not just a picture of Spider-Woman across the front. You're right. I don't um, understand how to really... like. Eventually, I probably will take advertisers, but again, it would be like one or two pages. And right now, like we had to... We had to cut a page from this. So there was so much story we wanted to tell. And I would hate for advertising to um, cut into our storytelling. It would, it would really bother me. I really, um, it's, it's not a great word, but as my friend Shannon put it, he said, you know, hey, Scott, good to see you. Um, you know, make it toy porn, he said. You know, make it just all about the toy. And... Um, I can't get my head around advertising. Uh, someday I will. Someday I will. I'll sell out. And uh, <laughs> be in Nike and, and 
um, uh, Bacardi ads on the back. Fang face. Wow, that is a deep cut, man. Um, next thing I wanted to open is my uh, every six week stiffened of knockoffs I've been buying from this collection, which is where most of my disposable income has been going for the last two years. Uh, not that I'm complaining. Uh, I never truly know what I'm going to get. I do know one of the things in here because I remember it, but it's actually kind of one of those things where I just buy things and, um, uh, you know, it's kind of like an open purchase order, so to speak. So what did he include? Oh my God. He included some stuff in here. He didn't tell me about. This is amazing. These are, um, superhero stickers. What are these? Decals? Window stickers from, I'm assuming the seventies. You guys ever seen these? Uh, there's 18 designs, Silver Surfer, Captain America, Hulk, Thor. Um, these are amazing. Hostess Fruit Pies. They, yeah, I would definitely do a Hostess Fruit Pie. I could break band to uh, doing a Hostess Fruit Pie. There's a Hulk. I didn't know I was getting these from my guy, but he has an amazing vintage collection. It really is. Oh, these are awesome. Holy smoke. Well, that's a classic. I've never seen these before. Uh, they're made in England, in Bristol, by a company called Lightwaves. Uh, nice 70s Neil adams -y Batman logo. Uh, ah, the Spider-Man ones are really nice. I wish I, you know, I wish I was a bigger... Oh, God, this is beautiful. Again, I didn't know these were in here. Uh, but... What a nice surprise. So many of them. <laughs> I like that Batman. That doesn't look like uh, like it's a Carmen Infantino or, or anything. I don't know where that's a swipe from. Maybe Chris Franklin can tell me. And, uh, oh, look at that. These are awesome. Um, I know he's not watching, but damn, I got to... I got to thank him. He asked me, you know, did you get the box? Did you like everything? And I hadn't opened it yet uh, because I'm not always uh, I'm not always the most super diligent guy in the world on this stuff. Yeah, no super villain can resist a suit, fruit pie. Um, I love those ads. Those ads are really funny. Yeah, I, I like that. Chris! Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Those are awesome. I didn't know you were here. Um, Adventure Woman. This is another. <laughs> this is I got an Adventure Woman in the last set, and it was the Diana Prince Mego Wonder Woman outfit. So it makes perfect sense. She's got a card. The picture is Wonder Woman, that she would be wearing a discarded, you know, Mego Wonder Woman set. And I remember um, when the Mego Warehouse in Toronto got opened up to collectors in the 80s my friend um uh, my friend um had like buckets of wonder woman parts you know just like suits her sunglasses her boots because they're the fact the warehouse just had them and they didn't want to do with them anymore um so this is very believable that somebody enterprising would shove this on a very you know fashion doll and then also uh, if you guys can see dynamite which a lot of people thought they didn't know what that was uh, a flare gun um, a knife and uh yeah this this rifle this rifle gets around a lot so this is absolutely um superman 202 cover thanks i didn't know that yeah i'm i'm blown away that's a lovely gift thanks very much for these these are these are fantastic <laughs> i love them um, the other thing in this box is a couple more closeout Migos. I heard Linda Carter got, she didn't get upset over the figure. She got upset over her image on the box. She wanted to be paid for the use of her image on the box. And that is why it was very quickly removed and gone to the, um, comic style. Migo didn't have the rights to Wonder Woman. The television show they had the rights to wonder woman the comic character um 
I don't think anyone else could have made a uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, Richard, I do answer that Electro in the magazine. Dave does answer that Electro Woman uh, comment. We, we call her Electro Woman. Um, the, the um, where was I going with that? Oh, Linda Carter. They didn't really have the right to use Linda Carter's uh, image. And um, so that, that was kind of a legal issue. But I don't think she was mad about the doll. Because the doll didn't really look like her. And I don't think she had any legal, like they sold it for years. Uh, but they didn't have the rights to a Linda Carter Wonder Woman doll. And I don't think that was uh, price reasonable. They also didn't have the rights to a Ferrigno Hulk. They would have had to pay Lou Ferrigno and probably Universal Studios, who designed that makeup, some money. And they just decided, well, we could just make a Hulk and sell just as many. And well, I kind of think they did. I think, you know, as much as I would have liked to have uh, a Lou Ferrigno Hulk as a kid, um, it really didn't, it really didn't work out all that well. <laughs> um, this is another one of these, and I've, I've gotten a bunch of these on this card, and I think I now have every character listed on this card. The Batman, the Captain America, Superman, the Amazing Spider-Man, Torch, Aquaman. Oh, he's not listed. This is Robin, and it's not a surprise to see a closeout Robin. This is, again, another Palitoy fist-fighting Robin. Um, in Hey, Eric, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm really happy to have this. Uh, he's in absolutely tip-top, perfect condition. Uh, this is definitely just end run. Let's get rid of it. And I, I often wonder if this is when Palatoy shut its doors in the 80s. They just kind of like pushed all this stuff out, and it kind of found new homes and seaside shops. Was there any? There's no uh, logo on this one, but um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but this one has definitely been like hung and pulled down uh, somewhere. It, it, it's not unpunched. And the other one, I've got another one of these uh, superhero punch outs that keep popping up. I, don't, I love the card for this. And uh, I think I have two or three of these guys now. And they're just ridiculous. Again, they are, they are original Palatoy fist fighters. In baggies with boxing gloves. Hi, Colin. Wow, New Zealand. That's awesome. I really want to go there someday, man. Um, yeah, the the new issue will be um, everything will ship on Monday. I mean, some stuff shipped today, but I mean, you know, I still had to do a lot of stuff around the house. Uh, but every single copy of issue five will um, be shipped. I don't know about their value, by the way. Uh, sorry, I keep getting distracted. Uh, and then I'm hoping that everyone in the United States that ordered one will have it by next Friday, which I really could use uh, your feedback on that. Please, you know, let people know you got it. Uh, word of mouth is really uh, crazy helpful for me. And uh, every time you tag Toy Ventures or Plaid Stallions or you show it on social media, it really, really helps me. Um, you know, so it's 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 just uh, I'm really grateful when you do that. So I'd love your feedback on issue five, what you like, uh, what you want to see more of. Uh, it's I feel like the magazine's really coming into its own. Uh, I I just got a question from King Eric. There are the closeout more valuable than the other ones? Probably not. Um, they 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 have a curiosity value to them, but you know, it, is this more valuable than a carded Palatoy Robin Fist Fighter? I don't think so. Um, carded Robin Palatoy Fist Fighter, that's gonna, that's a for the win. Not everybody loves closeout and baggy figures. I do. And, um, you know, I'm the, you know, it's one of those things, it's a preference thing. Toy Ventures issue five is on Amazon. Actually, every issue is on Amazon. Now they don't have inventory yet, obviously. But I'm assuming they'll run they'll run a PO next week sometime and probably have them in stock this month. Uh, the last thing I just kind of wanted to mention because they've been sitting behind my desk. Uh, thank you on MySpace. I have a MySpace account. I, I don't use it, but I have. I think I have two. I think there's a Plaid Stallions MySpace page. 
the kung fu guys you saw in the antique mall yes uh, aurora karate men are basically the same concept where you kick them down i had those as a kid and they actually were on an episode of all in the family archie bunker buys them for his grandson joey and of course that causes a fight in the family because they're violent toys and I remember that very much. I remember watching that as a kid, and I had those guys. I wanted to take those guys off um, off their bases and use them as G.I. Joes, but I couldn't figure that out as a kid. Action sort of like Stan Soapbox. That's a good idea. Um, I definitely want to continue the interviews and talking to people, and I, I've got one lined up with a good friend of mine in Mexico who has... You know, a mind-blowing collection, and I'm really excited about doing that for the next issue. Uh, and we're just going to keep doing interviews and talking to people, and a lot of people are coming forward. And if you have sent me a proposal uh, and I haven't replied, uh, that's not because of indifference. That's because of being overwhelmed. I got a ton of emails, and um, I want to. I let. I have a really interesting process where I circle back to things. So. If I haven't responded, don't take that personally. Um, I just kind of, um, I will get back to each and every person that wrote me and try and figure something out. But when, you know, I, I just can't process everything. And I have, like, I'm now in issue six and seven mode. And I will get for get cooking on that. Um, oh, MC, LG Toy Company, I, I don't know much about them. So nothing's being worked on it right now. I'll take a look at it sometime down the road. Uh, whatever happened to MC Toys, they dissolved. Uh, when Migo came back, they dissolved. Um, you know, Paul Clark uh, joined the Migo team, and um, his partner had another business. Uh, I don't know the name of it. But, um, yeah, I don't. I, I think that was kind of they were at an end when Migo came back. And uh, that was, you know, always Paul's goal to bring Migo back in a, in a format. And uh, I'm really happy for him. So basically, like, MC became Migo. Uh, you know, like, like if somebody says, oh, that's the MC sculpt they're using. Well, yeah, because Paul worked there. Paul owned MC and now works at Migo. So uh, it's sort of like MC's still there in a way. <clears throat> I love Big Jim stuff too. It it is the absolute best. I I love um, it. It goes for me. Um, Migo, Big Jim, and GI Joe. Those were the big three when I was you know first getting into the world of action figures, and it left a huge impression on me. The problem with Big Jim and GI Joe is that it is very space consuming stuff. I have you know I, there's points where I indulge myself and I buy a few items, but they take up so much stuff <laughs> selling sea monkeys and x-ray specs for five cents i don't know if i can i don't know if they might be a little bit more now um <laughs> mc hammer actually my buddy uh steve goes by used, actually goes by that on a on a, a forum uh the, the amigo forum um i wanted to just showcase a couple of things before i trail off here uh a friend of mine has been making custom figures and yeah dr steel is the guy with the silver hand <clears throat> and he's a good guy uh his name is brent and he has a company called brent's dolls which is i think you can look it up on facebook he does hang around in migo knockoff hq and he makes you know these limited run figures of characters that you know i don't think any toy company is going to do and you know without a license you know, he's just doing these micro runs and without anyone breathing over his shoulder and telling him you can't do this, you can't do that, like a major toy company, he's able to produce these kind of like knockout items. And this is one I just got from him. I had to have it. Um, and I apologize. Oh, I'll just take it out of the box. It is from the movie uh, Inframan. And it's not Inframan, uh, but that's, you know, that's the Inframan card. I love the word. That's a Basil Gogos. And Gogos is the way to say it. Poster. I actually have this poster in the other room. I, I love Inframan. It is, if you haven't seen it, please see it. It is just 90 minutes of fun. But he made this killer action figure 
of Queen Dragon Moms or Princess Dragon Moms uh, henchmen. And you may have seen these guys somewhere else. I think they were used. Yeah, they were. They, they were definitely ripped off in the uh, the latest iteration of Mystery Science Theater as like um, uh, Pearl or Forrester's henchmen, which was obviously a homage to this movie. And yeah, I had to have this guy. I mean, this is great to have an eight inch form and it's really, really well done. And so this is the kind of madness Brent is making. He makes a lot of obscure and interesting characters. And I wanted to showcase that. I've been meaning to do it for a while. They've been sitting on my turntable forever. And I had no Marks, Johnny West, or anything. My friends did because they all had older brothers, and those things were indestructible. So we played with Johnny West, but he was kind of that odd man out. He was really tall. He was bigger than, you know, the Mego superheroes. <clears throat> and um, you could really beat the living hell out of Johnny West, though. My goodness. Uh, this is the other one that I got uh, from Brent, and this is a personal favorite of mine, and that is Winslow Leach, the Phantom of the Paradise. I am a huge fan of Phantom of the Paradise. I have a little shrine to it in my uh, rumpus room. I've got one of the helmets. Um got some of the figures i have the original eight track i have some art the movie posters of course um but i you know and and medicom did a nice figure of it a few years ago but i'm amigo kid at heart and can i take this oh i can't take this off i swore i could okay i can't take this off um <clears throat> but uh yeah it's it's pretty sweet it is a very nice rendition of winslow leach uh, there's his little voice box, and um, he comes with his knife so he can <sighs> do, do what he does. And yeah, I am uh, super thrilled. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the shoes for the uh, motorcycle boots that he actually wears. You can see it when he's uh, going up to kill beef. You can see his motorcycle boots. But even Medicom did this. They put shoes on him. <laughs> but that's no big deal. I've got tons of those boots. But I mean, just really nice stitch work you pay a bit more because these are handmade they're not factory made but um well worth it he's really doing nice stuff and he deserves a little accolade and um you know we traded for some stuff and i actually want to work with him on a figure and um, i'll announce that fairly soon but we're going to do a little micro run of a cult classic character that i picked out but <clears throat> really nice card art I don't know if he still has any Winslow Leeches or Inframan left, but I know he's doing some really fun things with monsters and that sort of thing. I, I wanted to give him a little bit of a shout out. Um, yeah, the, you know, one of the interesting things about Marx is that when we used to hold Mego Meet in the uh, West Virginia for, I think we did it for nine or ten years, it was in a toy museum where Marx was. So there was a lot of incredible. Uh, Marx toys. It wasn't the official Marx Museum. That was apparently in the next town, but it may as well have been. Um, it, it really, yeah, Phoenix, exactly. It was really an excellent um, toy company, and they made a lot of high quality stuff. And it's it's shocking that they didn't they didn't make it. You know, um, I wonder what happened there. But coincidentally, Mego ended up buying a lot of their um, their molds and such, and actually did. Some Mego branded like Guns and Navarone playset, and um, I've been looking for years. They had this really cool space playset, and they used to have it in the toy museum at Mego Meet. Um, I think it was called the Galaxy or something. You know, it was like one of those things where you get a mat and spaceships and spacemen, but it was the Mego version of it, and that thing is as rare as hen's teeth. You will not, you will not find that. <laughs> I've looked for years. But I think Marx collectors are after those too because they're so obscure and it's a variation. So um, maybe maybe that's my problem. But um, I just you know I've, I've never been able to track that down. I never had um, a Johnny West figure as a kid. I never had a Gabriel Lone Ranger figure. But I I think Gabriel Lone Ranger is one of the nicest action figure lines of the 1970s. It is it is insanely beautiful and. Um, my God, it's a universe. I mean, they just made so many characters and so many sets. 
Um, I guess from what I've read, the entire thing about the Lone Ranger was not that we as kids really knew who the Lone Ranger was because it wasn't like getting a major push in the 1970s, but our parents did and our grandparents definitely did. And they would buy them for us. And that's absolutely true because um, the one Halloween, I can remember my mother saying to me, you're going as the Lone Ranger. And I was like, I am? And she had like taken it upon herself to buy me a Lone Ranger Halloween costume that year. Um, I, I was fine with it, but I just remember thinking like, uh, am I, do I like the Lone Ranger? You know, uh, And that was kind of, I think, along those lines where she just thought that I'd look cute as the Lone Ranger. And I went along with it. I, I was, you know, you're, you're six and you're getting free candy. Who cares? Mark's space character, nine inch scale. I don't know a Mark's space character that's nine inch scale. Maybe, maybe it'll come to me. Um, uh, I don't know. I know Mark's did, uh, a line called the ready gang that were a series of um, cowboys and Indians kind of thing that was sort of supposed to, I think, go along with uh, the Lone Ranger and they did a, a safari gang. Yeah. I was a huge six million dollar man fan as a kid too, Robert. Um, I was right in that sweet spot. I think, um, I think I was five or six when that figure came out, probably five. And uh, that was amazing. Major, Mar Major Matt Mason was uh, Mattel. Not Marks. Oh, Johnny Apollo. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I forgot all about Johnny Apollo. Wow, that's that's a 60s line, right? The only best of the West item I had as a kid was a, a carry case. This toy store just gave it to me. My dad knew the owner, and he's like, here, have this carry case. And it was like, I think it was the last best of the West item he had in the store, and he just thought he'd give it to his his friend's kid, but, and I put like my Migos in there, but I remember like, you know, I remember thinking like best of the West, what's best of the West? Cause I just kind of missed it. I was just, it just kind of passed me by. I was too young, I think. Um, the audio stream, oh, that's probably uh, what the problem is. Um, Mark's astronaut, yeah, that, Sorry, I'm just catching up on comments here. Jane Apollo. Oh, yeah, there was a Jane Apollo, too. Late 60s. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, NASA gift shops. They would have had them forever. Yeah, I, I completely flaked on Johnny Apollo. Uh, 60s toys are not my forte. Uh, you know, I know Captain Action, and I know a little bit about G.I. Joe and Matt Mason, of course. But some of that stuff gets uh, a little, um, a little uh, hazy for me. Yeah, Tom Hanks has the movie rights to Matt Mason. Did he want to play Matt Mason? He's kind of old now. Um, I, I don't know if he'll ever actually get that Matt Mason movie off the ground, but I hope he does because then maybe we could get a, a big Jim movie off the ground. Yeah, I'm, I was born in the bottom uh, months of 1970. So, yeah, I was about five years old when Six Minute Iron Man came out. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm uh, not young by any means, but you know I I did kind of miss a couple of things, uh, toy wise. Uh, the only way I kind of know certain items is through closeout. My parents were closeout toy dealers, and like toy like they bought, they weren't dealers, uh, but they were they were uh, what they call rack jobbers, and they would buy a lot of old '60s and '70s, early '70s merchandise. So. I grew up with Action Jacksons, and um, but I don't remember ever seeing an Action Jackson on a store shelf. I would have been way too young for that. Um, yeah, um, you know what's funny is that um, one of the things with rack toys I wanted to just briefly talk about because I was thinking about it was um, when I was working in a variety store in high school, like probably late high school. This is probably like 1990. I went into the back. And I found a um, box of Dukes of Hazard rack toys. And, you know, there was like the handcuffs and just weird, weird, inappropriate Dukes of Hazard toys. <laughs> and I was laughing at them. I remember that. I think I put them on the shelf. 
this was, you know, only a few years after Dukes of Hazzard got canceled. And I would love to do a Matt Helm, yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's funny the things you remember because, like, years later, I'm writing a book on these things. But um, it just kind of makes me laugh uh, to when I think back on that. Because, I, you know, why didn't I buy those? But, I, you know, I didn't buy them because I didn't really care at the time. I was a high school kid. And Dukes of Hazard merchandise was really easily found at stores. But it's, it's kind of funny now that I've actually got Dukes of Hazard merchandise in my book. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I think I think Tom Hanks would probably produce the Matt Mason movie now if he could get it done. I've never heard of American Bricks, but yeah, I would love to do a Matt Helm action figure. I love Matt Helm. I would love to do a Sonny Chiba Street Fighter action figure. Uh, I still, if I ever get the time in my life, I will. But it's um, not enough hours in the day and not enough resources, I guess. You know, and I'm, I'm putting out this magazine and I'm having a lot of fun and. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful for you guys joining me. Um, I'm probably going to uh, log off in the next few minutes just because it's it's, it's getting a bit warm down here. And um, But I, I would want to keep talking to you guys for a few more minutes here. Um, the, you, like the Mego Thor figure in a drugstore? That's cool. I never We never saw Migos in drugstores unless they were like, Heavily closed out stuff. Dukes of Hazard blonde wig, it would sell. All right. Daisy Duke shorts. I think they sell Daisy Duke shorts. I think they call, they can call them Daisy Duke shorts. Roscoe's hat. Only if it's used. Um, yeah, thanks very much, guys, for joining me. It's It's been an awesome night, and... I just wanted to kind of share and have some fun and unwind with you guys because I've got a busy weekend ahead. And thank you all for the support. And um, yeah, now I'm going to Google Johnny Apollo stuff too. Uh, it, it's really elating. And um, geez, I, I'm just I'm just so um, excited. This has been a fun uh, a fun day. It's been a really amazing day. And um, thank you all because. Um, it's been a long journey and you know it's almost a year since we published the first issue and that was a, a tremendous struggle and this was such a nice day um you know launching launching issue five has been a breeze um you know i've got great support from diamond that's going to be in comic stores again and i've had a lot of fun today like today was so pleasant and so exciting and like I said, I, I wasn't scared. I was excited to get up. So uh, thanks for joining me. And um, I'll talk to you very soon. And uh, yeah, uh, if you want to keep talking to me, you can. Uh, I'm going to do more live streams. And um, you can always hit me up in Pod Stallions or, or um, Migo Knockoff HQ. I'll be hanging out there. Thanks, guys. Have a great evening. Cheers. <laughs>